Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 600 for the 26th of Tamos in a regular year. So in today's episode, I'm going to begin by talking about codependency. So I've been reading quite a bit about codependency lately. And the conclusion that I've been coming to is that while there may be some people who are classically codependents, like in in an extreme kind of way, like maybe in a diagnostic kind of way, I think codependency is something that is, again, as I've mentioned with addiction before, something that's kind of part of the human condition. And I think it'd be really hard to find a person who does not have any type of codependency at all. I think codependency, and I'll I'll explain what that is in a minute, is something which is one of the challenges that we have as a human, one uh, something that Hashem created us with, and something that we need to really actively work to get away from because it's not actually healthy, as we'll see. So what is codependency? Codependence really boils down to control. Codependency is where you're in a relationship with another person, or we'll see even when it comes to God, we can be codependent with God, which is also not great, um, where you actually feel like that you can control on some level, whether consciously or not, the other person's relationship with you, whether you can control their actions towards you, what you can control, or that you can control their emotions or their thoughts about you. So this can be done in very overt ways, or this can be done in very subtle ways. So a very typical example of this is is people pleasing. So it's like, let's say if you really, a person has a very low self-esteem and they have codependent tendencies, what they'll do is they'll go around being really, really nice to people, really kind, giving, giving gifts to them, doing favors for them, smiling all the time, being overly accommodating, but it's not actually coming from an altruistic pure place, it's actually coming from a place where they're expecting something in return. Again, it could be conscious, it could be not subconscious, whatever it is, but they're expecting that the person will give them love back. And if they don't get this love back, if they don't get the reciprocal smile in return, gift in return, or even just love in return, they actually might start feeling really resentful. And this cycle can go on for a very long time. Speaking of addiction, which was a topic I know that we were talking about previously, codependents and addicts often will go together, which creates a really, really toxic coupling because what ends up happening in that case is that the codependent is constantly trying to get something from the addict, constantly trying to change the addict, get them to reform, and the addict keeps kind of showing signs of progress, but then not really. And then it just becomes this really, really, really toxic cycle. So what do we do about this? What do we do about the fact that pretty much all of us, in my opinion anyways, do have a certain level of codependency towards other people and we'll see towards God as well. Meaning to say that who amongst us, if you're really honest with yourself, can you really say that you don't care what people think of you, that you don't care how people feel of, feel towards you, that you don't feel sometimes the need to change people in certain ways if you see people acting in ways that are really destructive towards themselves or towards you or towards others like don't you really really want to sometimes go up there and and change them in some way tell them what to do something like that or when it comes to people's feelings towards you have you ever in your life done something towards a person done a favor towards a person acted extra nice towards a person with this secret hope that they were going to love you in return. It's it's a complicated topic because it's again, it's not always conscious that we do this, but it is something that's part of the human condition and it's something that we have to actively work against. So how do we work against this? And also, how does this play out with our relationship with God? These are two separate 
ideas to talk about. So first of all, I want to talk a little bit about how this plays out with our relationship with God, which is going to be the topic of today's uh, of today's episode, of today's portion of the Tanya, and also then talk about how to heal from codependency and what the alternative might be. So when it comes to God, yes, indeed, we might have a sense of codependency as well, in that, which might sound like, what's the problem with that, right? Because one of the biggest issues with codependency with people is that we're making people into gods, like that it's it really is like into a certain on a certain level to idolatry, because we are saying that these people have some type of power over us and we're ascribing power to them. We're giving we're, we're giving over our sense of happiness to people around us. We're saying, if only this person would love me, if only this person would act nicely towards me, if only I would be accepted in this social circle, then I would be okay, which is really giving these people a lot of power. And, that's, and that type of power is really something that only God has. Only God can give you that job that you're looking for. Like if you suck up to a boss, you know, and uh, really try to get that promotion. That's not, you know, this is a big topic in Sharbi Tachon. That's that's a, a really good safer that I've mentioned a few times here, that when you get that promotion at work, when you make that sale, it's not because of the client. It's not due to the boss. This is God giving you these things. It's these people in your life are merely just vessels to receive these, these good things. So anytime somebody does a favor for you, it's not because of them. It's not, we shouldn't be going out there and trying to like suck up to the people to give us favors. It's really God. God gives us all these things. So if that's the case, how then can I say that nevertheless, we could have a feeling of codependency with God that is not healthy? What does that look like? So what that means is that even when it comes to God, we can sometimes be a little bit controlling. We can sometimes think to ourselves like, okay, God, I'm doing all these things for you. I'm being so religious. I'm praying every day. I'm uh, I'm keeping Shabbos. I'm doing all these things. Like, where's my return? Hello. And it's like, we kind of can be doing these things like with an ulterior motive in mind, hoping for a reward, hoping that God is going to recognize us. And this is not healthy and it's not the way it works because ultimately, as we know, we really should not be serving God for ulterior motives for sure. And it doesn't even work. We can't control God as much as we think we can. We can't just like we can't control people. We can't control God. So what's the solution? What's the remedy for codependency, both when it comes to people as well as when it comes to God? Well, let's start with people because sometimes that's a little bit easier for us to kind of like wrap our heads around. So when it comes to people, what that really means is that we stay in our lane. We let go, we surrender to trying to control the other. We surrender the illusion that we could control the other, that we can make the other person feel a certain way towards us, change their behavior, whatever it is. We can't do that. All we can do is change ourselves. And in these books on codependency, the, that is really the focus of it all, is really just focusing on yourself, focusing on your own growth, focusing on your own development and all of that. And as a result of that, first of all, it's going to make you into a much happier person, regardless of what ends up happening. And ironically, a lot of times the people around you that you so hoped would like you or would change will actually end up responding in kind and and changing and actually becoming healthier themselves merely as a result of your own self growth, self growth. So again, it's not something you can expect of others. It's not something that that is definitely going to happen, but it's something that it, there's a higher likelihood it will happen if you focus on yourself. So think about that. Like it's you can kind of think about it in the opposite way. Like think about if like let's say you have a certain negative habit and there's somebody around you who keeps nagging you about that negative habit or if you know somebody who's a people people pleaser and they're always acting towards you in a way that just like reeks of, of fakeness and you just know that they're just like looking they see they just seem really insecure and they're just looking for approval from you it's kind of a turnoff right and it's like it most likely if you're aware of it is going to push you away from the person rather than draw you closer who are the people that we're, we're attracted to who are the people that we want to be near these are people who exude confidence these are people who really seem really self-assured people who you see are working on themselves those are the people you want to be near those are the people People that don't seem threatening to you. Also, how are you going to respond to advice from somebody about a habit that you have? Sure, advice is good. That's fine. If you have a friend out there who wants to give you a little tip here and there, that might be really helpful. 
And especially if you see that it's coming from a sincere place where they're, they're working on themselves as well. But again, if they're nagging you and if you feel like that there's like this thing of like you must change to be acceptable to them, that's not going to work. That's going to be a turnoff for you. So same thing when it comes to God. And this is what today's, uh, what today's episode is going to be all about, is that when it comes to God, this whole process of tshuva that we've been talking about, this is sort of like today is going to be a little bit of a time out in the sense that a person might make a mistake. We've been talking about the whole idea of tshuva. We're talking about lower tshuva and higher tshuva and the whole process involved in how this brings us close to God. Yesterday's episode was was all about this idea of kissing God, of really uh, cleaving to God in like a with our full souls when it comes to our minds, when it comes to our emotions, when it comes to our thoughts, our speech, our action. We really try to mirror God to the best of our ability to try to really cleave to God and really get close to Him. So what today's episode is actually going to be about is about this is about how yes well it's true this is the work that we need to do we need to work on mirroring ourselves to god we need to work to try to be as godlike as possible and to work towards coming close to god at the end of the day though what we have to remember is that the effect of our actions is is going to come from god it's not from us we're not actually affecting anything within god we're not actually controlling God like you can't use this as like a control mechanism to like get God to come close to you God will come close to you of his own accord you need to trust like you need to trust that if you do your part if you come close to God in your own way and do your work if you stay in your lane God will respond in kind just like again in a codependent relationship with humans a big part of it is trust is that you really need to work on trust the person really needs to work on not not so much looking at the other person, not really focusing on like, you know, second guessing, does the person love me? Does the, is the person going to change for me? Is the person going to do all these things? It's like, no, 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 just you do your thing and trust that the person will show up. Obviously, when it comes to humans, humans are fallible. Humans are not perfect like God. So some people will not show up. And then you'll know that that is not a good relationship for you to be in. And then maybe you should switch and be in a relationship with somebody else. But in order to develop a healthy relationship with either a person or will have to deal with God, it really involves staying in your own lane. It really involves focusing on your own growth, on your own development and trusting that the other will respond in kind, which when it comes to God, lucky enough for us, that is going to be the truth because God will respond in kind and God will love us in return. He will hug us. We, he will give to us in a way that we couldn't even imagine. So that is what today's topic is going to be all about. And uh, for context, we're going to be beginning chapter 10, the first part of chapter 10 of Yigar Satshuva today. So let's get into the text and see how the Altar Rebbe explains this. So the Altar Rebbe begins bringing us back to the topic of yesterday's episode, which was all about Shuva Ilah, the supernal Shuva that we talked about with the cleaving of the spirit to spirit through Torah and through Milas Chasadim, it's called, through doing acts of kindness. That, right? So we spoke about that yesterday, that the way that we cleave to God is through studying Torah. So we're using our minds and then using our bodies to do acts of kindness. And this all happens as uh, this cleaving of spirit to spirit comes as an, a drawing down, as a, a flow from above to below so that the word of God will actually be in his mouth. As it says, and this is from Yeshayahu chapter 51 verse 16 where it says, I have placed my words in your mouth. And also, this is another verse, this is from Shir Hashirim chapter 2 verse 6, and his right arm embraces me, God's right arm embraces me, and then, and this idea of the right arm in the Tikkun Zohar is explains how the right arm is, is associated with chasad. It's it's this idea of gemilus chasadim. So it's like when we do kindness to others, God responds in kind through embracing us with his um, with his arm. So it's like on the one hand we study Torah, and this causes God to actually infuse our mouths with his speech. And when we do acts of kindness, then this leads to God hugging us with his right arm, which is an indication of God's kindness. However, when it comes to lower man, meaning us humans, then we need to go from step to step. And this is what tshuva ilah is all about, this higher level of tshuva, of cleaving spirit to spirit, with having this uh, this intention of the heart it, during, during prayer. And especially, we should especially have this intention of the heart, this kavana, during shema, the recitation of this shema and the blessings of the shema. 
so that when we say this phrase, which is from the Shema, and it originally comes from Devarim 6, chapter 6, verse 5, that you should love God with all your heart and with all your soul, we'll be saying it really, really truthfully. So it's like really important to have true intention when we say those words. And also, then further on in the Shema, then the, and this is and the source of it is in Devarim chapter six, verse six and seven. That you is v'rima ele v'gomer v'dibarta ba v'gomer. That and you should and these words that I command you today, and you should go in their path. Meaning to say, it's talking about the study of Torah. That we that these words, the words of Torah, should be in a person's mouth in a truthful way. And what is truth? Truth is specifically Torah. Truth and Torah are often synonymous. And so too when it comes to keeping mitzvahs. As it says, and this is from many prayers, we say it says, Ashel kidshanu b'mitzvotav, that Hashem uh, made us holy, made us sanctified through his mitzvahs. And this is similar to, where else do we see this word Kodesh, this this word which is often translated to in Kodesh, but it actually or sanctified, it, it it actually has this like very intimate meaning. Is we see that in um, when a groom when a groom is accepting his wife under the chuppah, he says at mekudeshetli that you are, and he's giving the the ring to his to his uh, soon to be wife. He says you are sanctified to me. So this ring sanctifies him to his wife who soon to be wife so there's this idea of this really intimate bonds that's created through this sanctification and this is the idea of supernal sanctification which is what is it what is that exactly is this idea of precious precious it's like kind of like a transcendence like a removal kind of and havdala which is like a separation so it's like hashem is basically making us apart from everything else and making us sanctified to him so what does this mean? This level of something of this like high supernal level is something that is so transcendent and so apart that it can't actually be vested within the world. Because if it would be in this world, in the world, then it's because it's like it's so connected to God that and everything is considered as if not in comparison to him. So instead of being like contained within the worlds, it's in a way of sovev kolmi, that it transcends all the worlds. So what is this that we're talking about, this this level of God that we're tapping into when we have this uh, this specific kind of kavana in, in prayer of studying Torah and connecting to God in this truthful way, this is the, God's supernal will. And this is the supernal world that encompasses all the worlds. Like in this, it's not like in this like really revealed way in the world. It's more in this like transcendent kind of way. And this was explained in more detail, says the Alter Rebbe, in the first part of the Tanya, which is Sefer Shil Benanim in chapter 46. So you can go back and look that up if you'd like. And then the Alter Rebbe goes on. He says, then after the prayer, then we say, um, after praying, we say, and this is from Tehillim chapter 25, verse 1, it says, Elecha Hashem nafshi esa, which means to you, O God, I lift my soul. Meaning to say that this is like a declaration to God that I am going to lift up my soul, to cleave my soul to God all day long. And through this, through this great, um, the, all of this comes about through a great meditation on the greatness of God with a lot of uh, hamak kasadas, it's called like really like deepening of the thought. Uh, with Shnaim Lefanau Psuke de Zimra Kanunda, so which means like the two blessings before the Shema and also the preparation of the Psuke de Zimra that we say before the Shema. So all of this basically is like that we're really supposed to take the time to meditate upon the greatness of God. So that is the end of the section. And so just to kind of bring it all back together and bring it back to our, our introduction. So today is really all about our work, all about what we need to do, our focus. So it's like often, just like when it comes to people, deal, we focus so much on the other. We focus so much on like, what are they thinking of me? What are they giving to me? And really the solution to codependency when it comes to people, as well as when it comes to God, is really to focus on yourself. What love are you giving? What are you putting out there? What, how are you working on yourself? So this is the message of today, is that really what Hashem wants of us is for us to really work towards getting close to Him, for us to really work on meditating within ourselves and think about the greatness of God, think about all of these things, think about the transcendence of God, of the ultimate level of God, and and uh, and really delve into Torah, really delve into giving charity. And when we do all these things, yes, God will respond in kind, and we need to trust that, that God will respond to us and God will hug us and embrace us and lift us up to that level 
um, and remove us from everybody else, like make us Kodesh, just like, speaking of human relationships, just like a, a groom does to a bride when he says, that you are sanctified to me. So God will sanctify us. God will marry us, so, so to speak, when we engage in this in this behavior. So that's it for today. And tomorrow we will conclude chapter 10 and I'll speak to you then. And subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Taught project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.